still Walters. And a corner. And he's proved how valuable a loan period can be, Mark Walters. Here, of course, from Liverpool. And Neil Webb make his loan spell just as important. Well, he'll have to defend at the moment. Walters will take this corner. It's floated near post. Fjortoft gets there first and away by Bodin. Cut out by Smith. Now Walters again. Kelly waiting for it. There is Kelly. He's watched by Thompson. Never underestimate David Kelly. Give him an inch. He'll take a yard. And he's disappointed with himself for not finding the target from that range. Scott. Bowden. Nyholt now for Swindon. Robinson. Webb. Return ball to Robinson. Given away though. Here's Joey Beecham. Webb again. Ling. And the Webb. Good run by Beecham. Bowden. Beecham gets the return ball. He's watched by Birch. Gets the cross in towards Nyholt. And in the end, it was Keith Scott, whose header was over the bar. But uh, Joey Beecham is the dangerous man. He drifts over from the right-hand side, over to the left-hand side. Got the cross in. Keith Scott's header just over the bar. Keith Scott, of course, scored midweek as well in Swindon's 3-1 win over Lecce. That was Scott's uh, fifth goal of the season. That's floated towards Keith Scott again. Webb sliding tackle isn't enough. And while Keith Scott is still down in the Wolves penalty area. Darren Ferguson is allowed to run all the way. Kelly, 1-0. They just watched him. Ferguson must have run some 50 odd yards all the way down the pitch. He wasn't closed down. And Kelly put it away with ease. And after only 12 and a half minutes of this game. The league's leaders are a goal up. And as we speak, Keith Scott is limping off. He fell badly. And the challenge down one end, but a perfect counter-attack. Well, Mr. Folks won't allow Keith Scott back on the pitch. So Swindon are still down to 10 men. Fjortoft. Webb. Won't quite reach Robinson. Walters back there to clear his web. Walters. And Nyholt for Swindon Town. Towards Fjortoft. Bodin. And cleared off the line. But no, it wasn't. The linesman has flagged that it's a goal. And Paul Bodin has equalised within two minutes well just as it looked like uh, Paul Blades I think had cleared it off the line the referee looked to his linesman the linesman had flagged that it had gone in and Swindon have equalized almost immediately Paul Bodin got in there first just chipped it over everybody and Paul Blades well, so the linesman says, didn't clear it off the line, and it's one all, and this top-of-the-table encounter has really sparked off in magnificent style. Ball. 
ball dragged to the ground by Sean Taylor. And that means Taylor will go into the book. How many times have we seen the defender take that sort of action against Steve Ball? Just as it looks like he's going to turn him, he wrestles him to the ground. And once again, the defender comes off worst and ends up in the book. Dangerous position now. Looks like it could be Mark Venus who will end up taking it. It's, uh, Paul Blades is up there too. Referee making sure the wall is 10 yards back. Steve Ball on the edge of the box. Venus! Well, the space was made by Steve Ball running out of the wall, but uh, Fraser Digby knew where it was going, and he smothered it well. Brought off. That's for Scott. 2-1. Uh, Fjort off behind his man. And you can give it to Keith Scott, and he'll turn on a sixpence. And the leaders are now in trouble. A goal up after 12 minutes. Two goals to one down after 27. And that is Keith Scott's sixth goal of the season. Link. Good tackle, though, from Venus. No way through for Martin Ling there. Kelly out to Birch. Ferguson. Paul Blades. Smith. Towards Ball. Back inside. Kelly. And Kelly picks up his second and gets the equaliser. It's nip and tuck here at the county ground. Too much given and everything taken away. And we're back to square one. It's two all. Good cross from Jamie Smith. Far post, ball with the header back. Simple play and Kelly in there before the Swindon defence could get there. It's two for Kelly, it's two for Wolves, it's two for Swindon. Throw into Swindon. Venus. Webb gets there first. Bowden. It's half cleared. Beecham. 3 2. And Beecham will count that as his second goal for Swindon Town since his move from his unhappy stay at West Ham. Fell nicely for him and. Uh, he's got a good left foot, hasn't he? And it was always going away from Mike Stow. And it just drifted and drifted and drifted into the corner of the net. A quarter of an hour into this second half and Swindon take the lead for the second time in this match. It's 3-2. Flick on by Webb. Here is Fjortoft. Now Webb. Would have been a spectacular start to his career at Swindon. Good save though from Stahl. Now Scott, he's too strong for Smith. Fjortoft, good challenge from Shirtnip. Over the top is meant for Ball. Shrugs his man off. And Andy Thompson is there to clear it. But uh, the strength of Steve Ball, so important there. Shrugging off the defender. What a presence he has, Steve Ball. Even when he's not perhaps 100% match fit, what can he do here? Flick on, away by Beecham. Not very far, only to Birch. Here's Walters. Gets a little cross in, and the header from Kelly, looking for his hat-trick, was straight. That's Fraser Digby. Here now for Swindon on the counter-attack. Four against four, Beecham 
Still Beecham looking for his second. Oh, and Mike Stout was all over the place, even though he stopped it. It was swirling, it was dipping, and it was also coming straight out of the sunshine. But he did well to stop it. Neil Webb should be relatively happy with his debut for Swindon Town. The ball it's in behind Thompson. Taylor again to clear, straight to Venus. And Ling whips it off him. Three against two. Ling, Fjortoft onside. Fjortoft chips the keeper off the top of the bar. That would have been classic from Jan Fjortoft. He knew the ball was coming to him and he waited for it. You just see him holding it up. And he didn't dive in. He just wanted to buy the defender. He did that. He saw the keeper off his line and just put it onto the top of the bar. That was so close. It's always good to win, especially on your debut. I thought the game was a bit frantic, especially second half. Uh, a bit disappointed the way I started. It looked a bit like uh, sluggish in the first 10 minutes. Uh, but then I put that down. That's my first first team start since Easter. So in the end, I enjoyed myself. It wasn't the sort of game that I could get down with a lot of time on the ball and spray it around. It was the sort of game where you had to dig in, get some tackles in, get some headers in, hopefully, and uh, get the result, which we, which we did. I thought we played very well today, and we're unfortunate not to get anything out of the game. But these things happen. Sometimes you play not so well and you win. And it's balanced itself out today. We've given away three bad goals. Um, and that's hard when you're away from home. But we had enough opportunities to get three ourselves. Your opinion of Swindon's equaliser? Well, I mean, I sat in the director's box and there was enough time for me to see where the linesman was who was on the corner flag and he flagged for a goal, so he's in the best position to see and therefore I can't and wouldn't argue with his decision. Now, it's easy for people to be saying what they've seen on the television and say, how the hell did he give that decision? If he's made a mistake, we've suffered from it, but the consensus of opinion that he has made, a, you know, a rather bad mistake, but what can you do about it? We've got some difficult ones coming up. We've got me, uh, one of my old teams on Saturday, Portsmouth away, which should be fun. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to every game. I'm looking at this four weeks as, uh, as to, you know, to show people I can still do it at the, at the top level, and uh, hopefully I can get an extension down here. You know, uh, obviously I'm not in the forest plan, so uh, I'm looking to, to earn something down here. And if it's an extra month, you'll be happy. But if it's a permanent move, you'll be even happier. Very much so. Yeah. I mean, I like to, if you know, obviously it depends on the finances of the club and that. But if, it, if they want me for another month, I'll be more than happy to stay down here. Allowed to go unchecked, Wolves went one up. It was David Kelly, the scourge of the West Country, opening the scoring. But Swindon's equalising goal was immediate, although particularly controversial. Could this have really crossed the line? No doubt about Swindon's second, though. Keith Scott fed by striking partner Jan Fjortoft, and Swindon were in the lead. But in this seesaw affair, Wolves were level before the interval. David Kelly scoring his second from Steve Ball's vital header. But Joey Beecham snatched the winner for the second time in 10 days. Another left foot drive, enough to beat Mike Stowell and Wolves. Paul Bodin celebrates after chipping the keeper. The Wolves players, backed by manager Graham Taylor, complained. But the referee said it did cross the line. Make up your own mind. Keith Scott's goal put Swindon back in front but that was cancelled out by another from David Kelly. But the winner came from Joey Beecham for Swindon. No shortage of goals at the county ground.